yes yes and yes good morning to you how are you doing i'm fine by the grace of god and i trust you are as well we are sharing truth this morning on a powerful covenant coming from mark chapter 14 22 through 26. You are warmly welcome to the Really Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adeneko. The channel is packaged to inform as well as inspire you into a richer, deeper, bigger knowledge of the living God. Everything being powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Exuspiration, the PLACE. <music> This is a daily gem devotion hour, making you a gem to your generation and a gem soon upon the crown of Jesus. If you are fed up with sense knowledge and you now really desire revelation knowledge, you are on the right channel and we are praying. Our Father and God, we bless you, worship you. In the name of Jesus Christ, accept our worship. We ask of God that these few moments together will bring you glory, bring us blessings. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, then. Um, 22 he said and as they were eating jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said take it this is my body then he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drank from it and he said to them this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many assuredly i say to you i will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new in the kingdom of god and when they had sung a hymn they went out to the mount of olives i thought we should just pause here and see how um we should we, we, what you can get out of this uh, by the power of the spirit this morning so they went on about that passover thing and as they were eating um a time came when jesus took some bread um some people who have studied the way the jews went about that whole thing they've described how some bread would be reserved you know and you know <laughs> giving some name as it were some nickname as it were and that was quite a bit of a ceremony and all that but well that doesn't really matter to us here what matters here is that jesus blessed the bread and broke it and then gave it to them and made some pronouncements now we have noticed something this jesus each time he was the one that led um the table he will always pray he will always bless the bread or look up and thank God, you know, for it, you know, and then break whatever. Each time he led. But whenever he wasn't the one leading and some other person was at the head of the table, he would just uh, um, keep quiet and let the person who is leading do the leading. And so <clears throat> whenever it is we have what we believe is provision from God, let us thank God for it. Let us bless it. Okay. Um, and whenever we are the one leading uh, a table, for example, let us lead them in prayer and learn after the example of Jesus Christ. But where we are not the ones leading, even when we are leaders, either by nature or by position, let the person leading at that moment lead. There are times when a leader has to uh, keep quiet and allow some other person to lead. Even though he can be an inspiration and everything to that other person who is leading, he just chooses to keep quiet and allow some other person to lead because in that particular setting or situation, some other person is the leader. Even though you know you are the big father, you are the big general overseer, you are the big this or big that, at that point in time, one of your children is the one leading, let him lead and God will give you uh, uh, the honor for it so he went on and broke it and now gave it to them and said take it this is my body that was a profound statement that was difficult to understand this bread is my body how in the bread can be how in the will the bread be your body you know but then <laughs> they trusted him you know and then they were looking and then the bible says he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and drank and they all drank from it and he said this is my blood as in this wine we are looking at is your blood <laughs> praise the lord so the first one is this bread is my body and then again says this wine is, the, is my blood of the new covenant and now that's what we should talk about we're talking about the new covenant this morning <clears throat> the new covenant what, what makes it new the moment it is called new renders the existing one old 
That's what the Bible teaches. It says now, if God had not found fault with the old one, he would not create a new one. What is called the old covenant or the old testament was a covenant made between god and the children of israel and it was kind of midwifed or led by moses in those days read all the words of the covenant and says yes we are going to abide by the covenant and you sprinkled blood upon the covenant upon the tablets and upon the people and everybody prayed and that was it was sealed okay <clears throat> This was different from the one they had been carrying before that point, which was the Abrahamic covenant, completely different from the uh, uh, Old Covenant or the Old Testament, They're completely different things. The Abrahamic covenant had been in existence and they had been part of it, and that was why they, were, they all used to go through circumcision. And then in spite of circumcision, this other one came as well. Now, finally, Jesus says this is the New Covenant. Now, this New Covenant was promised several times in the Old Testament. It was promised in Jeremiah, was promised in Ezekiel, okay, and was promised indirectly through David was promised um, indirectly in Isaiah when they spoke about the Messiah that was to come. So Jesus now says, now this is my body. Take, eat it. That body got broken. The, 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 the breaking of the body is what allows the blood to come out. <clears throat> okay, that blood now is the blood of the covenant. Just like when the first king was cut off, blood will come out and that blood will be the blood of the covenant this body as it gets broken is what allows the blood to flow that blood is the blood of the covenant the covenant is a blood covenant in the the old covenant was also a blood covenant the abrahamic covenant was also a blood covenant now there are different types of covenants but the highest the deepest the biggest the most um, comprehensive all-encompassing um, of all the covenants is the blood covenant the blood covenant entails the entire lives of the two people on the two sides of the covenant um all you are and all you have and your life potentially is mine all i am and all i have my life potentially is yours if need will demand it praise god and so that's what god arranged for us in christ so god has arranged for us a powerful covenant blood covenant in and the blood of the covenant was the blood of jesus christ and that's why it says this is my blood of the covenant now that uh, bread that was broken was symbolic was representative of the body of jesus about to be broken remember after this he went into the passion week about to be broken and once he got broken blood came out okay so that blood now is the blood that sealed the covenant now we see two things here first of all the covenant a very very powerful covenant that makes all of god available to us just like God got called um, the God of Abraham or Abraham of God. This new covenant also makes God to be called God of the church. God of those of us who belong to Christ, who are part of Christ, who are, whose names are written in the book of life. And we also are of God. God is for us. We also are for him. That is what a blood covenant entails. That is what it's all about. Every one of God's resources, all of God's power, all of God's abilities, all of God's attributes, all of God's, uh, just mention anything God, is available to us as we exercise our faith in that covenant. If you don't exercise your faith in it, it's a different story altogether. But when you have an understanding of it, and I pray that God will grant somebody understanding this morning. When you have an understanding of it, it's about, is God for you? honest that's what the covenant is all about god for you and also we also for god you also for god so as you are in covenant with god god is in covenant with you god expects you to keep covenant and he also will keep covenant and mercy with you it's a powerful thing it's a big thing but the second part of it um is this let me finish with that first part now because of that covenant what it means is this that where i really need to get something done and it is not within my power to get it done then my covenant partner is going to have to fill in and get it done for me where he wants to do something and he's not within his power to do it then i his covenant partner i'm going to have to fill in for him somebody says oh what is it that god cannot do himself that we can do he can't preach the gospel for example we are the ones who are going to preach the gospel that was why he sent an angel to uh, to cornelius but the angel couldn't preach you know, the angel had to say, Cornelius sent for Peter. Peter was the one who would preach. Being a covenant partner with God, he is the one that will preach. God doesn't preach the gospel himself. He depends upon us to preach the gospel. The same thing, there are certain things that we cannot do. We depend upon him to do because we are in covenant. That's one. The second thing we learn 
from this passage this morning believe me i need another 10 minutes of, to, to do a good job of this of, of this whole thing <laughs> you know the second aspect of this thing is some symbolism of the spirit now one of them was this that this this bread i'm breaking actually represents my body you remember that in john chapter 6 he called himself the bread of life remember okay so it says this represents my body and this wine you are taking represents my blood of the new covenant you take it you eat this bread <clears throat> as you are doing that life is entering you you take this cup as you are taking this cup life is entering you okay you know um preparing you ushering you into that covenant and then after he passed he said we should continue to do it each time we do it we remember his sacrifice okay we reenact that covenant we reenact we bring again to the fore that whole thing about this covenant and i love it each time i go through this thing we refer to as breaking of bread and sharing of wine i remember the power of the covenant and how that i must live in consciousness of it i shouldn't put it relegate it to somewhere in the recesses of my mind no it should be in the fore of my consciousness and i should live my life as somebody who understands it appreciates it is enjoying it is proclaiming it is sharing it with people honestly i'm sorry we have promised you 10 10 minutes uh, for this thing this morning and so i'm going to have to uh, end it here if I, the lord so leads me then we may overlap to talk about it again but know something that this new covenant that you have in your hands is everything you cannot trade it for any other thing it's the biggest thing that God ever arranged with man. The biggest, biggest thing that God ever arranged with man and we should appreciate it as such. So, thank God it's Friday. I wish you a very, very lovely one. Bless you.